To this day, even though EVs have become very popular, there are still some misconceptions surrounding these vehicles. A lot of people ignore the advancements the different manufacturers reached in the matter. In today's video, we're going to clarify some of those misconceptions and talk about things you should consider before making the switch to an electric car. So subscribe and hit the notification bell and let's dive right in. Electric vehicles, often seen as futuristic, are becoming more accessible than ever. With a slew of new battery-powered models set to hit the market in the near future, the transition to electric is imminent. Despite this, there are still prevalent misconceptions about plug-in vehicles, stemming from outdated beliefs. EVs take a long time to charge. Drivers are accustomed to filling their gas tank in less than five minutes while it could take them up to a night to charge an electric car with a domestic power outlet. However, recent developments in technology and the installation of charging stations and home charging points have drastically reduced the charging time for EVs. EVs could get up to 80% charged in 30 minutes at the fastest charging stations. And some companies even offer swappable batteries, allowing you to go from 0 to 100% in less than 10 minutes. If you run out of battery in the middle of nowhere, you're screwed. If you ran out of gas, you can simply ask someone to bring you some, and you're good to go. But a lot of people ignore the fact that a lot of EVs these days support a feature called bidirectional charging, meaning that the majority of cars can charge each other up. Additionally, some manufacturers and insurance company offer their services to assist you in case of that happening. Your home electricity isn't enough to charge your car. That's totally false, as charging your car directly from a regular DC outlet is totally possible. It may take too much time compared to a dedicated charging point that you can buy separately, but you can live on charging your car overnight without any trouble. Electric vehicles are worse for the climate than gasoline cars. It's true that producing an electric vehicle is more harmful to the environment, but actually using the car for the long term do actually compensate for that. After running your car for tens of thousands of miles, the accumulated carbon footprint between making the car and running it adds up in the favor of the EVs, making them less harmful and also less expensive. Electric cars are a headache to maintain. And also, it may sound obvious to some people, but the majority of people think that electric cars require a lot of care and maintenance. EVs in fact require little to no maintenance, they are less complicated than a regular car, with less moving parts, meaning that EVs are more reliable than you might think. And now let's follow with things you should consider before making the switch. Charging and range. It might sound obvious, but do you know how many miles you do in a week? Lots of people overestimate how many miles they do each week, but knowing roughly how long your commute is, as well as how far you usually travel to do your daily tasks, will help you make a decision on how long the range needs to be on your new electric car. Consider your access to charging infrastructure, potential climate-related range reductions, and any expected changes in driving habits. With the average range of new EVs at around 250 miles, most drivers will find this range sufficient for their needs. A study shows that an average driver do around 100 miles per week, so an average driver can easily live with charging his car twice a month. Once you've determined roughly how long you'll go between charges, you'll need to work out your charging options. Can you get a charge point fitted at home? Can you charge at work? Or will you need to use the public charging infrastructure? And you should also check for compatibility with those chargers. Knowing how often you'll need to charge, and where you can charge, will have an impact on how important charging times are to you. Less so if you're charging overnight at home, perhaps more so if you're charging on the way to work once or twice a week. This may help you decide which vehicles will cover your needs. Performance One of the best parts about owning an EV is getting to experience the fast speeds and terrific handling that used to be reserved for sports cars and luxury sedans. A characteristic of electric motors is that all the available torque is available as soon as your foot hits the accelerator, which makes the 0 to 30 miles per hour time feel very quick if you're used to driving a gas-powered vehicle. This is true for a $30,000 Chevy Bolt or a $95,000 Tesla Model S. 
the 0 to 60 miles per hour times will be different, and you will definitely be able to tell. But it's great that everyday people will have fun driving their new EVs, whether they're car enthusiasts or not. Although some EVs can get on the heavy side, with the Polestar 2, for example, weighing in at about 4,700 pounds, the batteries result in the vehicle having a low center of gravity, this allows the compact sedan to handle extremely well. That same car's electric motor, delivering over 400 horsepower, results in the EV hitting 60 miles per hour in just around 4 seconds. A figure only accomplished by high-tier sports gas-powered cars. No matter your budget, there's a fun-to-drive electric-powered vehicle waiting for you. Insurance Cost Insurance costs for electric vehicles often come in at a higher premium compared to their gasoline counterparts. On average, it can be approximately 21% higher. However, this is not due to EVs being less safe or more prone to accidents. The main reason behind the higher insurance costs is the elevated purchase price of EVs and the increased expense associated with repairing them after a collision, particularly due to the costly nature of their battery packs. Federal Tax Credit A great upside to buying an electric vehicle in the United States is that the government will essentially give you a discount on the vehicle you end up purchasing. You probably already know how unbelievably confusing taxes in the US can be. As such, the credit you receive on your EV depends on several factors. At this time, the US federal tax credit provides up to $7,500 to put towards the EV you purchase. The credit may be lower if it is a plug-in hybrid and varies per vehicle. If you decide to lease the vehicle, the tax credit goes directly to the manufacturer, and they will factor this into the price of the vehicle, thus lowering your monthly payment. This is similar to how it works when purchasing your EV. The tax credit goes towards lowering the dealer's price of the vehicle and thus will lower what you'll pay out of pocket or your monthly payment when financing. This is a pretty fantastic pro to purchasing an electric vehicle. It's looking like the government will continue to provide a federal tax credit towards EVs into the future to encourage buying a more sustainable vehicle, but only time will tell because EVs are becoming the standard, and other countries are ending their support in the next few years, and it is very plausible that US follow that path as well. That's it for the video guys, if you are interested in discovering what is available on the market in the term of EVs, and the different features available only for electric cars, we've talked about the best choices available in different segments, you can check them on the playlist right here, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy our content. Thanks for watching and we will see you on the next one.